Alright guys, welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. Today what we're going to be covering is the lily pads. I actually had to recreate this uh, workspace because um, I wiped my computer, so there's a little bit of a schedule um, shift on how everything went out, but um, I, it's finally here, so <laughs> let's uh, get into today's tutorial. I also did uh, some more work on the actual models for the lily pads, so... They're a lot nicer than they were before, so I figure I'll make sure to include the uh, block bench, um, block bench thing, as well as a few other things as well for the uh, models and textures and stuff. But uh, yeah, so lily pads, how they basically work is you basically just uh, right click anywhere on the water and it will kind of place it on top. So just kind of like your regular lily pads. If we go into uh, Minecraft, the tab here and scroll down. Uh, the only difference is uh, there isn't the sound. I haven't set that up, but uh, all you would basically need to do is basically when it places the actual block to play the sound. We'll add that in just a second. But yeah, basically it has random rotation, as you can see here. And um, the other thing that it has is you can stand on top of it. I can <laughs> navigate properly. You can stand on top of them like regular lily pads, like so. Um, I think they're about the same, yeah, they're, I believe the same, uh, width or the height as well. Okay, lily pads are a little bit higher. I think they might be a little bit higher on the block, uh, base, but I don't know exactly what the dimensions are. It doesn't seem to be exact one pixel, so, uh, that's the only pretty much difference and um, the other thing is if we drive this boat into them they'll break so just like regular lily pads if we place some regular ones down drive into them you can see those break as well all right so that's basically how it works uh, we can also right click on a block and it will place it it's a little bit buggy because it's actually testing for a few things uh, the first thing is it's testing uh, where we're looking at and where we're also what block we're clicking on and then it kind of just goes upwards so it's a little bit buggy where it actually places it that's why you see it's placing the water but um, for the most part it works I don't know I haven't tested what would happen yeah so it's, there's still going to be water underneath it's just a visual glitch because I'm using um, the cancel per cancel uh, script for the global procedure. So let's hop into paint.net. I'll just kind of quickly briefly show you how the system works. We are using ray tracing so um, I'll try my best. I haven't covered that too much on my channel so let's go into paint.net and I'll kind of explain how the ray tracing works and then uh, what we'll actually how it actually works with the lily pads. Okay, so with ray tracing, basically what ray tracing is, is wherever the entity is looking at, it's going to basically go that amount of blocks. Now I have created a script to basically um, go the distance of how far the actual player uh, for creative, I believe it's five blocks and it was five or I think it's five blocks for creative and 4.5 or something like that for survival. So what I've had to do is create a repeater to basically increase that, that ray tracing amount from uh, basically from this point and to that point would be one block. And then there would be this point and then it would test from that point to this point right here, and then if it would find a block of water in that location, then it's going to be basically find the block here, and then if it does, it's going to play, uh, run a script to move the lily pad and find an air block with a water block. So this would be the condition right in this box here um, that it would find, and then it would say, okay, there's a water block below, and there's an air block above, we're going to place the lily pad right here. So that's basically how the ray tracing regularly, regularly, uh, regularly, I can't say that, okay, what, how it works normally. So, um, 
it will place it right if the condition is there's an air block and a water source below. Uh, the other one with the block right clicking on, so if we right click on the block, it's going to basically just go upwards and it's going to try to find a actual area that has a water source and a air block above or basically something that it can uh, put the lily pad on top. Uh, we are also testing for other water types of blocks as well. For example, uh, tall grass, uh, tall, tall, tall sea grass, uh, sea grass, um, coral, the water plants and stuff like that. Um, and uh, kelp as well. So those are the other things that we need to test for and we're just using basically materials uh, to test for those types of things. So hopefully this kind of shows how it works because um, I don't really know how to explain it too much otherwise. But uh, we'll go into um, mCrater and we'll just kind of quickly take a look at the code. All right, so there is a few different blocks here. The first one will, or not blocks, elements. Uh, we'll take a look at the element for the block first. So the first thing that we're doing is we're basically assigning the bottom texture for the lily pad. This can be just the gray model uh, texture, it doesn't matter. I have enabled, a, is this item tint, tintable? And then I've select yes. And it's uh, the tint I've created for it is foliage. Now, um, there is a few different things in the model. I'll open that up quickly. And um, as you can see, the actual foliage color is the part that is just the leaf, and then I have the flower on top of that. So that's basically why we're using the foliage, but um, uh, we can use the tint color up here and it'll be perfectly fine. So that's how that works. I've set the model for the actual lily pad and then the rotation for southwest, northeast, and it should be set to cutout. Uh, the other particular parts isn't really necessarily to necessary to actually set up. Um, all the other parts are fine. You can set a block item texture if you want. Um, that's always possible. It might look better than the one that I have set up for the actual model. Uh, block base. Now this is important. Uh, you need to offset your X and Z coordinates by one, uh, one pixel, which is basically setting the zero from here to one and the zero from here to one and decreasing the 16 here to 15, setting this to one, and setting the 16 here to 15 as well. And what this will do is it will shrink it down to um, one pixel high and 15 pixels in, or pardon me, a 14 by 14 pixels around the actual lily pad itself. Uh, this is useful for having the boat break the block, it needs to be just under the actual full width uh, and depth of the actual block in order for the boat to be able to collide with the block itself. So that's why this is set up the way it is. Uh, properties, um, hardness and resistance need to be set to zero. That's pretty much the only thing that you need here. Uh, you can set the materials uh, for the plant. Uh, you can put it under whatever creative tab you want. And I have set the block sound to lily pads, but it seems that when you're actually placing it, it won't actually play that sound because you're not actually placing it. It's uh, being placed by script, so we'll have to add that in. Um, the other particular properties can be adjusted however you would like. Uh, the advanced tab, uh, you want to set the color on map to foliage, and I think that is all that you need here. Uh, we are not using a tile entity for this, so it's good for natural generation. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, the only other thing that we have in the block itself is when the entity collides with block, uh, we're basically testing for the entity if it is a boat. And then what we're doing is we're going to remove block at and then the coordinates of the lily pad and drop at and then we're offsetting it to the center of the block that it's currently at uh, plus 0 0.5 so it's centralized and we're just going to basically drop the item for that particular lily pad. So that's all that we're doing in that one. That's the easier script to actually set up. Uh, generation, uh, there isn't any generation set up the way through here. It's probably best to do it through structures anyhow. So um, if you do create a lily pad, it's probably best to do it through structures if you're going to do that. All right, so that's that part down. Uh, we do have uh, three other procedures here. The first one is a little bit easier to understand. This basically is a global procedure. Uh, a block is placed. Now what this is going to do is we're going to test for the lily pad that we're basically placing. This is the one that we created, not the vanilla one. And if it is that one, then what we're going to do is we're going to test if the um, block below is not water, seagrass, or an ocean plant. If it's not any of those, then what we want to do is basically cancel out the procedure and prevent it from being able to be placed. So that's all that this one is actually doing. Uh, we have two other procedures. Uh, this one is a little bit more complicated. This holds the actual um, procedure when we right click on the block and use ray tracing. So I'll try to cover how it all works as best as I can. It's a little bit more complicated to explain. It's really simple and straightforward when it comes down to it, but um, it is a little bit overwhelming. So I will try my best to explain. So the first thing that we're doing is we're running a global procedure. Uh, it's player right clicks on block. Then what we're going to do is test for the entity's item in main hand. If it's equal to a lily pad or lily pad that we're creating, then what we need to do is we're going to test if the entity is in creative mode or not. So we're going to create an else statement down here if they're not in creative mode. The only reason why we need creative mode is because we need to actually test for the distance for how far the player can actually place the block. Now we're using repeaters to basically test for that. So I'll explain that in just a little bit. But um, we also need a few different variables as well. The first thing that we need to create is found location, random rotation, source position, and place position. So those are basically the important parts when we're actually creating the system. Um, I'll cover that in just a second. So after we've basically tested for the game mode of the entity, what we need to do is we need to set our variables to the default state. So um, now again, creative, uh, there is five blocks in distance for where a block can be actually be placed by an entity. So the player can only reach out five blocks in creative and survival or any other game mode. Wiki says it's 4.5, I think. Yeah, 4.5. So zero, we had to offset the so source position and the place position to 0 0.5 and set our repeaters to 4. So that's basically what we did there. All right, so our source position is basically the position that we are going to test where the actual block, actual ray tracing location is. So again, if we open up our paint.net and we'll just quickly look at our first example. So actually we're using the block, so we're gonna be using that. So if the player is looking down at the block here, then what we want to do is we want to actually uh, test for the um, source. So this downwards direction from the player is the source direction. The place position is basically the repeater that basically searches for the condition for the air block and the water source 
after we clicked on the block itself. So that's basically how the source and um, source and place positions work. So again, with the repeaters, if you've already guessed it, our source position is basically going to be testing for the source. So if the enti if the um, if the block is at the ray tracing location, so our source position where we're actually going to be placing the um, block. So this is controlled again through a repeater system. Uh, every time the repeater goes, it's going to increase the source position. And then what it's going to do is keep testing for the distance up to five blocks in creative. Uh, 4.5 for survival. Now if it finds water, or if it finds seagrass, or it finds an ocean plant, then what it's going to do is it's going to run the inner script here. And what this is going to do is basically set the try for the place position. So again, it's going to run for the same distance in the uh, for the how far the player can actually place a block. If it's uh, in creative, then it's five blocks. If it's in survival, then it's 4.5. So what it's doing is it's going to then test if the um, let's see if I can figure this out if the Ray tracing distance is the source position plus place position. So basically when we started the variable, the place position is zero. So it's gonna kind of just test for the relative location for zero. And what it's going to do is it's going to increase the position uh, every time that the inner one works. So this plus the position for the place and then what it's going to do is test if it's air, uh, so plus one, and then if uh, the material uh, minus position, plus position minus one is equal to water. Now that's basically testing if the water source is under the air block, and if that's true, or pardon me, if that's if it's water, seagrass, or ocean plants. So it's testing for those underneath the air block. If it finds that, then what it's going to do is it's going to set the found location to true and break out of the loop. And then after it's basically already set the variable to true, then it's going to immediately test for the found location. And that will, if it's true, then it's going to break out of this uh, repeater here. And then what we're going to do is run the script for actually placing the block. So we need to test for the location if it's true. And then we're going to set the uh, place the block at the relative um, source place that where the air block is. So again, our air block is using the ray tracing for this, our ray tracing Y plus posi place position and our Z position for our source entity or source position. So again, we use those variables for the air block right down here for placing it. And then what we need to do is uh, we're also going to set the random rotation. So what I've done here is I've set the random rotation, uh, random, uh, a random rotation variable to random, and then I've basically tested for the four different uh, very four different um, ranges for basically setting the random rotation. So again, I'm just uh, targeting the block that is at the uh, where we basically just placed the lily pad and then we're just setting the rotation random to that. So again that's all that's doing. It's pretty much the exact same thing for the other one. Uh, one other thing that I skipped over by accident was the we're also testing for the trigger direction face. So if we're right clicking on the block if it's um, the top part of the block. So if, if we basically player right clicks on the top surface of the block then what we're going to do is basically run the script upwards from that so um, if we open up this then it would be equivalent to having to click on that part right here on the face if it, we click on that it shouldn't work because it won't work on the sides it's just going to work on the flat face up here. 
All right, so let's go into the other procedure and I'll try to cover what that does. Now again, it's the exact same thing down here for the actual player, but um, the only difference is we're setting our repeaters to four and we're offsetting the source position to 0 0.5. And that's just covers up to the 4.5 position for survival and other game modes. At least that's what the wiki says that other modes outside of creative have. All right, so now that's saved. Uh, if we want to actually add a sound though for when it gets placed, uh, what we need to do is we need to go to world data and then play sound at, and then we're gonna place that right here. Uh, we also need to run this on server side so it um, only plays once. If it's on both client and server, then what it's going to do is it's going to basically uh, play twice so it makes kind of like a double sound so what we need to do is we need to get a not statement and then we need to go back to world data and grab this block right here and run both our repeater and our a random location and our play sound play sound on server side only should actually probably put that on the randomized part on server side. And then all we need to do is basically find the lily pad um, sound. So it's somewhere in here. I'm just going to quickly look up what the sound is and then I'll continue. All right, so I searched for it a little bit. Uh, Wiki actually says that the block is block lily pad placed. So I was searching for that and I couldn't find it. It turns out uh, mCreator has it named uh, water lily dot placed. So if you're looking for that particular sound, that's what it is. And the pitch you need is 0 0.8 where the level is one. So that's basically what you need to do for that. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is just gonna collapse that, expand this one, and we're going to place this one right here and I'll make sure to include the system that I have set up with a newer script so that's basically what we need to do for the sound all right so that's all set up now um... for the other one other procedure uh, it's um, basically the exact same thing uh, the only difference is we're not testing for the players right clicking on the block instead we're basically right player right clicks with item and then we're testing for the item the game mode and running our script we're not actually testing for the block direction either because we don't need to and then uh, what we're doing down here is the exact same thing as what we did before it's just that um, we're not testing for the block that we're right clicking on either all right, so uh, again, if you want to add the sound, uh, it needs to go in this part right here. So we need to create that up. Uh, we need to go to logic, grab a not statement, go to flow control, grab an if statement. And then we need to go to world data. And then we need to scroll down and grab our run on client side, which we're basically testing run only on server side. And then what we need to do is we need to go to world management, grab our sound block. We need to set our pitch to 0 0.8. And then what we need to do is click this and then scroll down a while until you get to block W and should be in here for, at least I think it was around this area. Yeah, right here. So block dot water lily dot place. So that's the one we need. We're just going to place that right here. Going to move our random thing, uh, random variable, so it only runs on server side. That will make it a little bit more efficient when we actually right click on things. Okay, and then we're going to collapse that. We're going to collapse this one, and then we're going to open up our other. Um, or survival, adventure, 
and other side for that's not in creative and then we're just going to delete the older uh, old variable for randomized and we're going to place that in here and then that's all set up all right so that's basically all there is to creating it i will make sure to provide the script as well as the actual um resources for the textures models and uh, workspace as well for on a github so you guys can check the description in the bottom of the video and you can get your hands on all the uh, script and stuff for this particular tutorial other than that uh, let's quickly just uh, test out the new script so i'm just going to collapse this and then we'll save this as well and that leaves all our procedures that we've covered this one is just the entity when collides with the boat that we set with the lily pad so let's hop in game and then i will basically just demonstrate the sound that we got now all right so if we right click with a regular lily pad you can sound you can hear what it sounds like and if we right click with our lily pad Uh, you can also hear what it sounds like. So that's basically what we got uh, set up with the sound. So hopefully you guys found today's tutorial uh, helpful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.